got marker? All right, so PB, PB equals an RT, right? So for gases, it would be pressure times pressure one times pressure, pressure one times volume one equals pressure two times volume two. Your homework was given in liquid or aqueous states with plausible precipitates or just color change. We're looking at concentration or molarity times volume equals second molarity times second volume, right? So you see the connection, right? One is dealing with, so you can do it with pressure, or you can do it with just a concentration of the substance itself, right? Okay. Um, this one coming on? Take a second. So, you have, um, what is it? Four? It's four, right? Yeah, one, two, three, four. You have five, five basic types of reactions, okay? Five basic types. All right, you got synthesis reaction. Does anyone know what synthesis reaction? Anyone guess what synthesis reaction is? Yeah. So what about behavior? Example decomposition. Right. So synthesis and decomposition are the exact opposites of each other, right? It's like addition and subtraction or multiplication division. They're uh, anti-symmetric operations, right? So decomposition is breaking down, right? So you start out with a compound that's together and it decomposes to its constituent parts. You have an example of that? Decomposition. You start out with a compound that's together. A body? Compound. <laughs> oh, a body? Yeah, yeah. So that's much more complex, right? It's one of the simple things. For the, for the dead body, you have like, you know, hundreds of thousands of millions of compounds. Yeah, we want something simple. A cell. How about a cell? How about a water vapor and a cloud to rain? No, that's changing states. That's still water, right? Yeah, you're in your Although, it's only like a lot of changing states. So, an example of synthesis would be like uh, <coughs> oxygen and hydrogen, right? Oxygen and hydrogen. H2 plus O2 reconfigure together to form what? Water, right? H2O, right? That would be synthesis, right? You have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. You pump them together, bring them down to room temperature. When they interact, they synthesize to form water, right? Okay. Or you can use hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to form peroxide as well. You can synthesize that. So that makes sense. You're taking two different elements, adding them together to form one thing. Now, decomposition will be an example of decomposition. Breaking down. Breaking down. Breaking down. Breaking down. Breaking down. Breaking down. Breaking I'm asking you. What would be the opposite of what you need? Yeah. So, for example, let's say you have a cup of water, and the uh, room, temperature, room temperature gets really, really high. Then the water begins to decompose, doesn't it? It evaporates. 
so it would tend to become, it would tend to change state, but some of it's going to come off as hydrogen gas, some of it's going to become oxygen gas, some of it's going to become just water vibrating off. That's a simple example. I'll be another simple example. It'll still steam water. Not because hydrogen gas, H2 and O2 can be gaseous, right? So you have a reaction and change of state, right? It's simultaneous, right? So your example wasn't wrong, it was not as simple as. Not as simple. Yeah. Um, what's another example of decomposition? Um, what about flowing water? What about flowing water? That's just solution. Sure, that's sure. Yes, Right? You got somewhere to go. 
hold the branch. You can hold on the branch. You be like doing like this. <laughs> See, y'all didn't know this is real life, right? It's real life, right? Yeah, combustion reactions tend to involve oxygen, typically. The combustion, combustion reactions, reactions tend to have like heat and uh, fire involved, and then you end up with a uh, byproduct like, uh, like so we'll say gasoline. Gasoline would be a combustion reaction, right? So, so it, it ignites, uh, and then you get a byproduct of carbon dioxide. There you go, right? So, but we'll see, we'll see this. I don't know why this was up here. So, like anything in the first degree that you call is, is what you call combustion reaction. Right, so they give you an example of synthesis, right? They give you a carbon and an oxygen, right? So, carbon will be an element, right? We'll consider it a compound, right? And an O2, so carbon plus an O2. When they form, they're going to come together. You got two things. Thing number one, thing number two. And together, you get one thing, right? Which is carbon dioxide, right? That's synthesis. So you get one thing, right? So those are going to be what? Double bonds? So you can see double bonded with O, double bonded with another O, right? So in general, you can use variables, right? A plus B is going to give you one compound. Now this A, this A or B can be O2, it could be NH3, it could be any combination, right? As long as they're contained within themselves. So A plus B is going to give you one compound. So any two compounds or elements, compounds or elements, form one complete thing, right? That's, that's synthesis, okay? So you can make a whole career out of just like, Organic compounds like cosmetic industry is good on that, pharmaceuticals, anything that's bioreactive. I'm scanning. I'm scanning. I'm scanning. You can. Elements or compounds. One or the other. Elements or compounds, right? Okay. Is that clear? He asked a very good question, right? So it could be elements or compounds. You could have two elements. What would be an example of two elements, like nitrogen and hydrogen forming together to get ammonia, right, NH3? In this case, they gave, or it could be a compound element. I have a question. Okay, looking at the chart, how would we know which one the elements are compounds? What chart? Periodic table. Okay, the periodic table only has elements on it. So how would we? Huh? So how would we do the compound thing? Yeah, you got to use the octet rule, right? And rule of thumb is uh, the uh, what is it? Elements on opposite sides of the periodic table tend to like each other, right? And alkali know. metals and all. Yeah, what are you talking about? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> four and greater than the four and greater. <laughs> so this is an example of a synthesis reaction. They've got, uh, what's that? Yeah, potassium, see? Potassium and chlorine. See, potassium tends to be on the left-hand side of the periodic table. And chlorine tends to be on the right, so they tend to like each other, right? So the ion exchange. So uh, chlorine, what is it? Potassium wants to find chlorine. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, so potassium is a plus one because you go to your group number. Potassium is group number one, right? Mm -hmm. And chlorine is group number seven, seven right? So it's going to be a positive one and a negative one. They cross, right? So you get two potassium. So potassium plus Cl2 gives you potassium chloride. Now notice you've got to have a balance, right? So notice they put a molar constant out front. So two potassiums here, right? Two potassiums here. Two potassiums here is balanced. Chlorine here, two here. You got your molar constant out front, the whole thing. It's also balanced. So whatever you have on one side, you gotta have on the other side, right? 
that's your molar ratio. Okay. Let's keep going. Do it practice. All right. So sodium gas plus chlorine to oh, sodium solid plus uh, chlorine gas. What's going to be the product? Sodium carbon. What's what's carbonate? Carbonate is CO three, right? So someone coming right on. But I don't have a marker. You also can't write on. You got a marker. Yeah, you, you can come round right the board what you think is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so sodium. Salt. Yeah, it's going to be salt, right? So sodium chloride is going to be NaCl2, right? This is going to be synthesis, right? NaCl2, right? Um, how many sodium? One. How many chlorines? Two. So you're gonna, you, that's a synthesis reaction, right? You got two elements forming together to one thing gives you, that's a synthesis reaction. So a solid and a gas together gives you another solid or salt. All right? And you have these cubicle structures, right? So that's something about like a, Table saw, somewhere it's table saw, right? Yeah, so it'd be like. Mm. What about magnesium fluorine or fluoride? What would that be? That's gonna be similar, right? MgF2, right? Same thing, that's synthesis. So you see here, they just have elements, but it doesn't have to be element. You could use a compound element too if you can do that. Oh, I think it's like, um, for, I don't know what it comes out. Yeah. Can you go back? I'm gonna go back. Is it raceable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So here you see um, chlorine 2 has a negative charge, right? See chlorine? It's negative ion, right? Sodium has a what? Oh, wait, I thought chlorine had a positive charge. What are you talking about? Negative, right? It's ion, it's ionized, right? So you got you got you got a cross. See? It crosses, right? That's gonna give you what? So there are two of these, right? So you got ion exchange here. That's how you know what substance you put, right? So in other words, Na plus Cl2 is gonna yield Na Cl2, see? See, that's your synthesis, right? You get one compound here. Now, on the left-hand side, you can have a compound element form and synthesize the one thing, right? So a good example of that. So all these are the same, right? There you go. See that? Um, I think you made a mistake right here in the last one. Yeah, that's not correct. Yeah, that's not correct. Well, this is now balancing. So, so here, here, and you put a, um, you put a two here. to go uh, with element by element. Okay, and you can do it that way. All right. If you go element by element, right, then what you're going to get is so you're going to start with uh, N A plus C L. It's going to give you 
what? Put two there. NaCl like that, right? Okay. So what happens is, let's say you're given this, right? And you have this other side. You got one sodium. You got to count. You got one sodium, right? On the left. See? One. How many do you have on the right? One, right? How many chlorines do you have on the left? Two, right? How many do you have on the right? One, so it's not balanced, right? So you got to balance it. So how do we balance it? You got to add one to each other multiply by the end. Mm-mm. You don't add one. You got to multiply. Multiply by what? Right. So here, over here, right, in order to balance it out, you got two chlorines on this side, right? So how many chlorines you got to multiply this one by two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then that throws off this one, so in order to get that balanced out, you got to have a two in front of the sodium. You see that? So two in A plus CO2. Now look at it. So how many sodiums you got? Two. So you got two. You're good, right? How many chlorines you got? Two and two. This is called a molar constant. Can you put it out front? That's a molar constant. Okay. So they give you examples here. So that last one is probably correct. Yes, they wrote it like that. That's correct. All right. So magnesium chloride um, is going to be a similar thing, right? You can put two out front. Yeah, they, they have that. Understood. Here, so let's try aluminum chloride. Now, actually, the other way to do this is by systems of equations, right? You can do it like that, too. Right? In other words, um, you got this right here? Two 
y is equal to This works very well unless you have you have two sets of equations. It helps when you have two sets of equations, right? It helps. So what you do to get a balance, you solve for one variable, right? Or if you want to do it a simple way, right? All you gotta do is you ask yourself a question. You say, what number balances out these two on either side, right? So right. So three. That'll give you six on this side, and then we'll make a bounce on the other side too, right? Mm -hmm. But now your aluminum's on balance. You got yeah. two here, right? Okay. But really, what that is is you're solving the systems of equations, which you're doing. You set up your equation like that. You ask the same thing. What value of uh, x would give you the appropriate value of y? All right. It's actually an algebraic equation. But see, you can do it this way, you're doing it in your head, right? But it's actually an algebra right here. So for example, you say x equals, try it, 3y minus 2y, something like that. Um, yeah, and then you do x minus 3xy. Wait, 
Anybody got a lighter? A lighter? Yeah. Nobody smokes? Any smokers? you're far away, it's fine. Was that the magnesium strip? Yeah, you've seen that before, right? In lab? In lab? Yeah, I've seen that. You see that? No. You see nothing, man. You see nothing. You got something to put in after you light it? It's going to turn to powder. Magnesium strip, right? 